Hello everybody, how are we doing? How is everybody getting? Whoa, chat already filling up. Apologies, I know I'm um, a couple of minutes late. I was sorting out some behind the scenes bits and pieces. So it will all be ready and raring to go. Thank you once again to Multiviewer for sorting us out with all the data and live timings and bits and pieces. But how are we all doing in the chat? Ariosto, lovely to see you. Wakey, wakey, eggs and bacon. I wish, I wish, unfortunately. It's too early. It's too early even for breakfast at this point, Ariosto. Sally in the chat as well. How are you? How are we all doing? Flame 3150. 12 a.m. Ooh. Really should be asleep, but can't. It's time to watch the race. It is. It's one of those feelings, isn't it? You know, you should be asleep, but... You need, you need Formula One in your veins. Inject it into yourself and you'll be all good. Alvaro in there as well. The Danish car spotter, hello. Pango and me, Finley F1. How are we all doing? Thank goodness for coffee. <laughs> Batool in there. Given, hello. Six eyes, hello. Manifesting a Lando win today. I would absolutely love that. I would love that more than is possible to say at this point. Wit, 12.36am as well. It's one of those ones like, do you get up early or do you go to sleep early? Oh, sorry, yeah. Do you go to sleep early and get up early or do you just stay up? Is what I'm trying to say. Even I'm just waking up at this point in time. I just couldn't sleep. Could not sleep last night for some reason. Thing is, because I knew I had to get up. It's one of those, like, I was like, I was in the camp of get an early night, go to bed very, very early. Just couldn't quite fall asleep. Just, just my mind racing, knowing that I had the Formula One to come. I do both. Daniel Ricciardo DNF. No, 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 no. We need Daniel Ricciardo to do well. I do want Daniel Ricciardo to do well. Like, I just don't know how well he's going to do. <laughs> but he does start from 11th place. Let's have a little look at the grid, shall we? I'll pop it up for you just so you can have a little look in case you missed qualifying yesterday. But it's pretty close towards the top end of the grid. There wasn't much separating, well, a lot of the drivers, to be honest with you. Little bit further ahead from Red Bull at the front. But then apart from that, very mixed. McLarens, Ferraris, Aston Martins, Mercedes, all kind of in the mix with one another in the top 10. Couple of RBs hovering around the points, but there really wasn't much between Sonoda and Ricardo yesterday. You know, considering Yuki sonoda has been in three Q3 sessions in three races... There wasn't actually too much between the two of them. Hulkenberg, as we expect, kind of right there as well. Peppermint, thank you for subscribing to the channel. An early subscription in the stream. Love that. Bottas in there. Albon there. It's kind of, you know, the Sonoda, Hulkenberg, Bottas, Albon is kind of the drivers you expect to be in Q2, if I'm honest. Ocon kind of sneaking in there. I suppose Lance Stroll is the, the glaring issue in terms of where people should be and where they ended up. 16th for the Aston Martin. Gasly with 17th. Magnus and Sergeant Joe. It's interesting, it's interesting. We'll kind of go for it in a little bit more detail. Hello, Mallory. Are we calling it for Max already? Unfortunately so. The Japanese Grand Prix, though, if you're not putting your money on Max Verstappen, I don't know what you're doing. <laughs> like, the Red Bull is just very, very good here. And Max Verstappen is very, very good here. So that combination works quite nicely. And then on top of that, it's also a track that kind of hinders a few other teams. So... As much as it is a good Red Bull track, it's a bad Ferrari track. It's a bad Mercedes track a lot of the time as well. So a lot of the other sort of closest competitors do find this track quite tricky. Um, Lando Norris should be the one that's kind of in the mix. In my opinion, anyway, 
You know, you look at the Japanese Grand Prix last year, McLaren were the closest competitor. Probably will continue to be the closest competitor this time around. Cool guy on the bus. Hello, how you doing? Finley F1 is manifesting Daniel Ricciardo points and weirdly Albon points. No, no, I can get behind Albon points. Starting 14th place. Could definitely put himself in, in the mix. Suzuka indeed. Shall we then? Have a little look. My short form videos keep me caught up on races like these where the US viewers can't catch them. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. I try my best. I try my best. But as Six Eyes said, let's go to our predictions then. Let me grab your guys' predictions from the community tab. I always put up a, a poll slash uh, predictions community tab section every week. So if you're not heading over to... I mean, if you enjoy the shorts and keeping up with the shorts, you'll absolutely love the stuff that we get up to on the community tab. A really, really lovely community of people. We have some very good debates on the community tab that a lot of the time I do cheekily use for videos. I kind of put stuff out on the community tab, get a little feeler for it. And if people are engaged... We uh, get to have a little chat about it. And I definitely use some of your guys' opinions <laughs> to bulk out some of my own opinions for videos and various bits and pieces. So if you want to head over to the community tab, a really good debate this week actually on the future of Yuki Sonoda. I also made a video about that uh, earlier on in the week as well. If you want to you know, quickly watch a video before the Grand Prix gets underway, I'd recommend that one. Because uh, obviously heading into his home Grand Prix this weekend, Yuki Tsunoda starting in the top 10, once again showing his quality. But where does he really land in the future? I just wasn't too sure, so I chucked out a community tab poll. But let's talk about predictions then. Get yours in the chat if you didn't manage to get them in over on the community tab. What's the weather looking like in Suzuki? It's looking very hot which could be really interesting for tire degradation because this is already one of the most difficult to judge like tire degradation tracks. Uh, but usually we get kind of rainy, cold Japanese Grand Prix. But they've moved it to the complete other end of the calendar. Because got to remember, Japan was what, the fifth from last or sixth from last race last year? This time it's the fourth race of the season. Like they've completely shunted it forwards. And um, yeah, massive, massive change in weather conditions as well. As you would expect from changing completely and utterly when the race is being held. But looking very, very sunny indeed, which should very much change up the, the order. Cool guy on the bus. Hello. London is red. Arsenal 3-0 Brighton. I know, but Liverpool play today. Don't you worry. Don't you worry. <laughs> Praying for Max having an overheating issue. Two for two would be very impressive. F1 fan Alonso top. Scout the Beagle. Hello from New Zealand. Amazing. Hello, hello, hello. Anyway, let's get into those predictions, shall we? We had Antonio David get in there first. Massive OG of the channel. He's gone Max, Carlos, Lando as his podium. Not too shabby. I could see it happening. I could see it happening. Best team, McLaren, of course. I think a lot of people coming into this weekend are expecting McLaren to really step up a gear. Because uh, the first three tracks, well, Australia does suit the McLaren a little bit. The first two tracks in particular, Bahrain, Saudi Arabia, they just not quite align themselves with the best that uh, McLaren can do. Struggle, Charles Leclerc. Oh, that is a very hot take considering yesterday's qualifying. And flop, Alpine slash Lance. <laughs> I think... Uh, it's uh, one of those ones. Podium, Max, Sergio, Carlos. A lot of people with Carlos on the podium, even though Lando Norris starts ahead of the Spanish driver. I think 
just expecting Ferrari to be a bit more competitive when, than they were last year. I am really looking forward to kind of seeing where everyone shakes out in this one because it gives us a real indication of how they did over the winter break. So if you think usually when we go to the Japanese Grand Prix, it's like another 12 months until we see the cars on the exact same track. And by the time we've gone kind of 12 months in the future, not only have they had the winter break, but they've also had a season's worth of um, testing and upgrades and various bits and pieces. So you don't really get to see how the cars did just over the winter break specifically. But because Japan has gone from the end to the beginning of the calendar, it allows us to have a really good touch point to be like, okay, they were here at the end of last year. Then after, you know, five more races at the end and a winter break, they've been able to be here. Because a lot of teams haven't brought huge upgrade packages yet to this season. Instead, we are looking at teams that have basically only got their winter breaking or their winter break upgrades on the car so far this year. I know there have been a couple of changes. Like Daniel Ricciardo's got a new floor this weekend. Uh, there were some changes to the Red Bull this weekend as well. But generally speaking, this is like a really good judge of how the winter break went for those different teams. Podium, Verstappen, Perez, Norris, said Harry Ogre. <laughs> Username board, Max Checo, Charles. Okay. Okay, okay. Best team, Red Bull. Surprise, Valtteri Bottas. I would be surprised to see Valtteri Bottas in the points, mainly because... It still feels like steak or kick or sauber, whatever you want to call them, haven't quite sorted out their uh, pit stops as of yet. And because of the increased um, temperatures, we might actually see a few more pit stops than we're expecting. Might see some cars go for maybe some outside of the box strategies. And it feels like steak are likely to be one of those teams just because they don't. They don't really want to do pit stops. <laughs> like They want to do weird things and they don't want to have to stop in the pits because uh, they know that it's going to be a slow stop. Yuki Tsunoda at the front there. I think there was a message actually in the chat asking why is Yuki Tsunoda on the thumbnail? Japanese Grand Prix. And also he's one of the most informed drivers on the Formula 1 grid right now. So a nice little combination for Yuki Tsunoda and the fact that he is absolutely flying at this moment in time in Formula 1. How each team improved after five years of the Chinese Grand Prix. Yeah, a little bit, little bit harder to judge that one, isn't it? But a fair, fair, good comparison to have. The problem is with five years is we were in the previous um, regulation cycle beforehand, weren't we? So... The teams are in completely different situations, mainly depending on how well they managed to adapt in 2022. Max is the favourite. Smooth operator to win. Back-to-back -back victories for Carlos Sainz would be madness. Would be absolutely brilliant. Do I think Charles will get on the podium? Uh, it's going to be it's gonna be tough. It's going to be tough. He's got a lot of work to do. Best team Ferrari because they hardly have any issues with the cars. That's very true. They did seem to be a little bit more consistent. I mean, Charles Leclerc literally did have a problem in Bahrain. So maybe, maybe not. About vehicles. Thank you for subscribing, mate. Appreciate that. Red Bull is strong as always. Yeah, I'm expecting a Red Bull 1-2. Expecting a Red Bull 1-2. But you never know with Sergio Perez. Maybe he goes for a silly little move. He did have an absolute nightmare in Japan last year where he smashed into Kevin Magnussen of all people. Maybe he has an absolute nightmare once again. Maybe takes out Max Verstappen. Causes a little bit of damage to both of the Red Bull cars. Opens the door to a little bit more of an exciting um, fight for the lead. Otherwise, I do feel like it's going to be quite the battle for that final podium place. Lando Norris starting there, but there's Carlos Sainz just behind. Fernando Alonso, Oscar Piastri, Charles Leclerc. Like, there's a real mix of drivers behind there. And it's a, a good opportunity to have a little bit of a battle for that final podium place. McLaren to get the podium? I certainly hope so. 
I I certainly hope so, but we'll have to wait and see. Alvaro went for Verstappen, Perez, Alonso in the predictions. Struggle, Joe Guang Yu. And worst team stake. Yeah, I feel like with, with him starting from the back of the pack, with the fact that they still haven't sorted out their pit stops, they still have that cross-threading issue. Could be a long one for Joe Guang Yu once again. Wow, knowledge. Went for Max Lando Hamilton. Best team, McLaren. Surprise, Daniel Ricciardo. Struggle, George Russell. Ooh, that is a hot take in terms of predictions at the end there. Lewis Hamilton getting on the podium and George Russell being your struggle. That is, uh, that is unlike what we've seen so far this season. But then apparently... Lewis Hamilton has been running some kind of weird setups towards the beginning of this year where he has been kind of testing things for the Mercedes team and therefore he hasn't uh, hasn't been super satisfied with how the car has been able to be set up because he's just been trying weird and wonderful setups to try and get this car to actually work for the Mercedes team. But let's uh, move on over and remind ourselves of the grid coming into this Japanese Grand Prix. Around 10 minutes to go until the fourth round of the 2024 season will get underway. It's going to be Max Verstappen starting from pole position. Once again, just seems to click with the Japanese Grand Prix circuit. Flew around yesterday, but it was very, very close to Sergio Perez within a tenth of a second of his teammate. And it's not often we get to say that about Sergio Perez in qualifying. Max Verstappen does usually have a bit of an advantage over his teammate, but the advantage minimal, I would say, yesterday in Saturday qualifying. Sergio Perez starting just beside his Red Bull teammate. Can he save his Red Bull seat? Is he going to be his Red Bull teammate next year? Keep an eye on that one to sort of see over the course of 2024. Lando Norris then starts in third place, rounding out the podium places. If he can stay there, be his first podium of the season. I feel like he's worth a podium, is Lando Norris. Been a slow start to the McLaren season, but he's ready to kick on at this point, Lando. Ready to get involved. Carlos Sainz starts in fourth place after the victory last time out in Australia. I think he's going to be looking to, again, move forward, pick up another podium place, get himself right in and amongst it in terms of the Drivers' Championship, considering he missed round two of the 2024 season. An exceptional start to the year for Carlos Sainz. Fernando Alonso starts in fifth place. It's going to be tough for Fernando Alonso. I'm going to, going to be honest. We have seen the Aston Martin sort of qualify well and slowly fall back the order in the first three Grand Prix of the season. But Aston Martin with a, a little bit of an upgrade this weekend. Maybe, just maybe, they will be in the mix properly and Alonso will be able to hold off the likes of Piastri in sixth place. Piastri's had a really solid start to the season as well. Back-to-back -back fourth place finishes in Saudi Arabia and Australia. His home Grand Prix last time out. And uh, also his birthday this weekend, Oscar Piastri. His birthday yesterday. So he'll be looking to celebrate this weekend in Japan and definitely a very solid start to the season considering, again, just his second year in Formula 1, Oscar Piastri. He starts in sixth place. It really is the old and the new on the third row of the grid. Then in fourth, it is the... Sorry, on the fourth row of the grid, I should say. In seventh place is Lewis Hamilton starting beside... His soon-to-be Ferrari teammate, Charles Leclerc. It'll be interesting to see how those two get on with one another. Not only today, but also next year. Keeping an eye on the fourth row of the grid. Could we see some interactions between the two teammates before they are officially Ferrari partners? Charles Leclerc, of course, in the Ferrari. Lewis Hamilton still at Mercedes for the 2024 season. And his Sort of replacement as the number one at Mercedes. George Russell starts in ninth place just behind his teammates. There's going to be a real mix of McLarens, Ferraris, Aston Martins and Mercedes behind the two Red Bulls in terms of the start of this Grand Prix. And it's going to be 
I feel like a real battle for that third place finish in terms of those drivers behind. But everyone from Norris to Russell should be looking at that third place and thinking you can maybe get their hands on it today if everything goes to plan and then rounding out the top 10 starting in the point scoring positions Yuki Tsunoda at his home Grand Prix his best finish at his home Grand Prix is a 14th place he would absolutely adore getting some points in front of the home fans the Japanese fans are so incredible that seeing Yuki Tsunoda get some points would very much be uh, a wonderful thing for not only him, but also the fans that have come out. We then have Daniel Ricciardo starting in 11th place alongside Nico Hulkenberg. A much better performance from Daniel Ricciardo in 11th place. More like it from the Australian. Needs to continue a little bit of that form. It's not been the greatest start to the 2024 season, but still more than enough time to prove his worth on the Formula 1 grid, Daniel Ricciardo. Liam Lawson in the background, though. And Nico Hulkenberg in 12th place. Sort of put himself in a in a solid position, especially with the 2025 driver transfer market looking very tasty. Feels like Nico Hulkenberg could find himself in a, in a nice seat moving forwards or just stay with the Haas teams. Worked very well for him over the course of 2025. Looks very, very happy with Nico Hulkenberg. Um, in that hash setup. Bottas and Albon then start behind in 13th and 14th place. A very solid qualifying session from Valtteri Bottas in 13th yesterday. Then Alex Albon in 14th place. Also pretty solid from him getting through to Q2 along with Esteban Ocon who starts in 15th place. Also managed Q2 in that Alpine which is not something that He's been able to do very much this season or anywhere near as much as he did in 2022 in compar or 2023 in comparison. Lance Stroll, maybe a little bit of an outlier, starts alongside Esteban Ocon on the eighth row of the grid. Starts in 16th place. Uh, very much our position, but had a bit of a shocker qualifying. He even said himself just couldn't quite find the pace in that Formula 1 car yesterday. Thank you so much, Jax, for subscribing to the channel. If you are new here, we are live for every single race, qualifying, sprint race and sprint qualifying, back-to-back -back sprint weekends in China and Miami coming up. So make sure you're subscribed for that. Pierre Gasly and Kevin Magnussen start on the penultimate row of the grid. Gasly looking to move forward. Feels a little bit better in this car, but still has said there are things to change and things he wants to move forward on with in this Alpine car before he feels 100% comfortable. And where he was at the end of last season, Gasly was absolutely flying in that Alpine car towards the end of 2023. Hasn't quite started in that sense. Kevin Magnussen, 18th place again, just looks a little bit off the pace of his teammate, but whether or not he'll be up to some shenanigans once again, maybe he can do the Saudi Arabia special and get Nika Hulkenberg up into the points. Then we have Logan Sargent and Joe Guan Yu at the back of the pack. Logan Sargent, of course, racing with that broken chassis that has been repaired, but it is still a broken chassis at Williams. Needs to be a little bit careful. Had a shunt in free practice one. We were worried about whether or not he was even going to be able to take part this weekend, but he is there in 19th place. And Joe Guan Yu just... Really, yeah, not clicking with the car this year so far. Joe looking a little bit out of sorts. Doesn't help that the Stake Sauber team are pretty shocking when it comes to um, pit stops so far this season as well. But he'll start at the back of the pack. Good mix of medium and soft compound tyres there. See Fernando Alonso, the highest ranked soft compound tyre starter. Maybe looking to make up some positions off the start line. Get himself track position before he then has to go into the pits and change those soft tyres out. You can see Hulkenberg, Bottas, Albon, Ocon, Stroll, Gasly and Sargent also starting on the soft compound tyre. It's medium compound tyres for the majority of the top 10 runners though. Daniel Ricciardo also starting on the medium compound tyre. Kevin Magnussen and Joe Guang Yu also towards the back of the pack. What a crowd out there. They are absolutely amazing. The Japanese Grand Prix, by far and away, one of my favorite Grand Prix of the year. Just, just for the fans. Like, the fact that they all dress up. The fact they all make their own costumes for the Grand Prix. I think it's just absolutely amazing. 
When does the race start? We're looking at about a minute's time. Cool guy on the bus. Thank you for subscribing to the channel, mate. Also, if we could hit the like button. Yesterday, for the Japanese Grand Prix qualifying, we did break the qualifying record for likes on the stream. Thank you, Ethan, for subscribing. But I think, let me just double check, the... So we hit 200 likes in qualifying yesterday at the Japanese Grand Prix qualifying, but the record in terms of likes for a race stream so far is Bahrain. It's going to be tricky. It's 535 likes. That is the record so far this season. So if you want to break the race record for the number of likes, 535 is the target. But thank you guys so, so much for joining me, for getting involved in the chat. And we're about to see the cars get underway for their formation lap around this Suzuka circuit. Max Verstappen does indeed get us underway. He breaks off with Sergio Perez just behind him. Just very quickly going to... Sort out a couple of my live time and screens. Prepare ourselves for the race start and get ourselves in a position where we are ready to go. Final predictions in the chat. London is red. We can do it. AJ Morris, I watch all your videos. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. That is the thing that you can do that helps the channel the most, to be honest. Just watching the videos. It's more than... More than enough. Maybe watch them twice. <laughs> 86 likes now. See if we can get that over 100 before the start of the stream. That would be absolutely amazing. How's it going to get points? I can just tell. Nicole, can go 12th place. It's not completely out of the realms of possibility. As we start to see the cars coming towards some of those really famous corners in the Japanese Grand Prix circuit. The Degners, the Spoon, the 130i. It's just like so many incredible parts to this Formula 1 circuit. Such an incredible test for the Formula 1 drivers on the grid. One of their favourite circuits. You know, you talk about Sebastian Vettel always says how this is his favourite circuit on the Formula 1 calendar. And you completely understand why just has a little bit of everything. It's fast. It's flowing. It's technical. It just has a little bit of everything you want from a Formula 1 track. I haven't actually popped up the Drivers' Championship as of yet. Just to remind you super quickly, because we are on the formation lap as it starts right now. Max Verstappen coming around the final chicane. But Max Verstappen does lead the championship. Charles Leclerc, Sergio Perez in and amongst it. Just five points between the top three. Carlos Sainz then on 40 points as well. But remember, missed a race. So it's right in there. Piastri and Norris just behind in the McLarens. Just one point between them. So whoever finishes in front in terms of the McLarens today should jump uh, the other one and sort of give themselves a little bit of breathing room. It's only going to be a few points between them. George Russell, Fernando Alonso, Lance Stroll and Lewis Hamilton in the top 10. Yuki Tsunoda just behind. Six points for him last time out. Oli Behrman, of course, in 12th place. A little bit of a barrier for the back of the pack drivers. Hulkenberg and Magnussen with points so far this season. Albon, Joe, Ricardo, Ocon, Gazi, Bottas, Sargent in that order at the back of the pack without any points so far in 2024 constructors championship red bull ferrari mclaren mercedes aston martin rb Haas, williams stake sauber alpine <laughs> in that order quick fire let's get to the race and as you can see the stake sauber of joe guan yu just lining up at the back of the pack his first ever home grand prix coming in a couple of weeks time but until then it is yuki sonoda's day starting in 10th place let's see what he can do from there in the rb car and there is joe guan yu settling into the back of the pack safety car in position green flag is waved we're gonna get underway five red lights and we are on. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go, 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 go. Max Verstappen, a solid start from him. Sergio Perez also leans in. Oh, it's going to be Carlos Sainz up the inside of Lando Norris. Not quite this time. Lando Norris just guides him around. 
and make sure he holds on to third place. Oscar Piastri also has a little look at Fernando Alonso, but doesn't make it count just yet. Lewis Hamilton manages to hold on just behind Oscar Piastri as well. Oh, and that is the Williams of Alex Albon in the wall. I'm not sure what happened. Daniel Ricciardo also out over this one. I was looking at the front of the grid, but Daniel Ricciardo and Alex Albon seems to be of a collision between the two. Nico Hülkenberg has also been the one to sneak up into the points, into 10th place, and it's a red flag already. 17. Oh, sorry, uh, four, what, 43 seconds into the Grand Prix. Let's have a little look then. We didn't actually get to see a replay of it. Daniel Ricciardo's RB car in pieces. And Alex Albon similar. But in very different parts of the racetrack. Alex Albon seems to have gone off. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Thank you for all of the new subscriptions just there. I completely missed them. I was trying to work out what had happened to Alex Albon. But a few subscriptions in there. Jeffy and Meme. Thank you very much for the subscription. Alex Albon hops out of the car. I oh, know Alex Albon's car is, is right there behind Danny Ricardo's. I thought Danny Ricardo's car was all by itself, but it was just hidden <laughs> from the angle that we had. Couldn't actually see the Williams car, Danny Ricardo, just above, uh, uh, of Alex Albon just behind. So those two coming into the barriers together. Alex Albon just trying to escape the advertising hoardings. And both drivers out of the car and walking away from the scene. So let's see a little replay of this then. So I can give you a bit of a breakdown. A really slow getaway from Daniel Ricciardo. Tries to cover off Alex Albon. Starts to get squeezed. Lance Stroll is actually around the outside of the pair. Oh, and it's Daniel Ricciardo. It is the tiniest little bit of contact. I think Daniel Ricciardo had his eye on Lance Stroll, who was on the left-hand side of him. Moves over to the right-hand side of the track. And unfortunately, that gap is filled with Alex Albon at that point in time. Oh, it's Yuki Tsunoda with a poor start. Yeah, Yuki Tsunoda with a poor start, but then he lunges up the inside of his teammate. Daniel Ricciardo has to submit to Yuki. And then, oh, it's the tiniest, tiniest bit of contact. There's not a lot in that. Alex Albon, just, yeah. Alex Albon had nowhere to go there, really. And I think, from my perspective anyway, Daniel Ricciardo's kind of looking to the left-hand side of the track. He's got the... Oh, it's both, both of the uh, RB cars. Absolutely terrible getaways. Valtteri Bottas jumps up into the points almost instantly. But Daniel Ricciardo loses so much momentum. Ocon is around the outside of him as well. He's just going for the racing line, unfortunately. Daniel Ricciardo. Unfortunately, uh, that is a Daniel Ricciardo at fault there, I would say. Lance Stroll's point of view in all of this. So you can see Yuki Tsunoda lunge up the inside of his teammate. Ocon going around the outside. Daniel Ricciardo does have the race in line. <sighs> Lance Stroll, I don't know. He wasn't... I'd, mm, Lance Stroll's there, don't get me wrong. But it's not like Lance Stroll is up alongside of Daniel Ricciardo and causing him a headache or anything like that. Oh, and then Kevin Magnussen goes for a hell of a move on Logan Sargent as well. Bloody hell. Kevin Magnussen loves a lunge in 2024, doesn't he? That's what we've learned so far. Saudi Arabia and now in Japan. Jesus. Kevin, calm down. That's a, that's a hell of a move from Kevin Magnussen. Love that. Sue Burke, love this channel. Thank you so much. Turbo WTF. Uh, I, it, I mean, it's going to go down as a Daniel Ricciardo fault. I think he could argue that he was, you know, looking at Lance Stroll because basically he had Lance Stroll on the left-hand side, but then Lance Stroll kind of submitted. Lance Stroll was off the racing uh, uh, line. He was off the track for a little while as well. So Lance Stroll kind of submitted and shuffled back in behind Daniel Ricciardo. And then Daniel Ricciardo is just trying to squeeze across 
uh, and get back onto the racing line effectively. And as he does that, he then just clips the tiniest of clips, but does clip Alex Albon's front wing with his rear right tire. And as Daniel Ricciardo does that, sends both of them into a spin. And unfortunately, Japan is one of those circuits that is not overly forgiving. Does have to be said. Not a very forgiving track. Uh, tire wall, grass, end of end of race. <laughs> it's effectively what happened for Daniel Ricciardo and Alex Albon. What will be interesting is how much damage is done to that Williams car. Because remember, they still don't have a spare chassis. And I know that Alex Albon is out of this race. Don't get me wrong. You know, he's he's there now. He's done. He's out. But if that chassis is damaged in Alex Albon's car, that then means they're going into the Chinese Grand Prix with two broken chassis that have had to be repaired without having any way of getting a new chassis out to the team. Because I think they still don't actually have a full set, uh, a, a full, uh, sorry, spare chassis moving into into the Chinese Grand Prix in a couple of weeks' time. I might be wrong. They might be able to, you know, fast track one, get one out. But imagine, you know, they're struggling to make one spare chassis. If they need to replace both of them, Williams are in a very, very awkward situation, especially when it comes to the, the cost cap as well. Let's see if there were any radio messages that came through that were interesting towards there. Repairing the barriers, that does make sense. Yeah, it felt like it was a a barrier repair that was going to cause that red flag. Quite a shunt, has to be said. And obviously with tyre barriers, they have to then be replaced. It's going to be interesting. The Tech Pro barriers that they have at other circuits, kind of more street circuits, are a little bit easier to replace. This is going to be a moderately long red flag. So if you know, if you, if you maybe want to check out a video in the meantime, did a video on Yuki Tsunoda and his future in Formula 1, you could check that out. Open a new tab. Just saying. Uh, <laughs> how long for the restart? Uh, hasn't been determined as of yet. But as I said, they have to completely replace the tyre barrier that is there. So it's going to be a little while. They're just moving uh, Alex Albon's Williams out of the way. Daniel Ricciardo's car has already been moved. So they are starting to work on the tyre barrier now. But a good chunk of damage has been done to those tyres. They need to be reset, repositioned. Uh, the Armco barrier also put back in front of it as well. It's going to be a little bit of a... Um, I'm good. Most of the drivers out of the car at this point. It was a little bit of a uh, a domino effect from Yuki Tsunoda, that one. Although I'm not sure Danny Ricciardo can get away with blaming his teammate. But definitely a little bit of a domino effect looking at it. Because Yuki Tsunoda, really poor start, which kind of slows down Daniel Ricciardo as well. Because Yuki Tsunoda then goes for a lunge up the inside of his teammate. Bottas and Hulkenberg have disappeared into the distance. I think it's interesting that Ocon was also able to make up a position as well. And I think from there, Daniel Ricciardo just realized he was in a little bit of a no man's land situation. Where he'd lost a lot of positions, not really because of a... Uh, his own... Oh, no, his start was pretty rubbish as well. Both of the RBs, terrible off the line. Bottas goes past. Hulkenberg goes past. Ocon goes past. Sonoda goes past. Gasly then also goes up the outside of Daniel Ricciardo. Like, there's cars flying past Daniel Ricciardo. Like, there's nobody's business. He probably thought he was at the back of the pack, to be honest. He probably thought, how... I'm in 20th place. There's so many cars going past Daniel Ricciardo at that point. Logan Sargent also with an absolutely dreadful start. Joe Guang Yu disappears into the distance, but kind of helps himself around the outside, does Logan Sargent. Good little battle between Logan Sargent and Kevin Magnussen going through the first couple of corners. They have to worry about Daniel Ricciardo spinning in front of them, but then Kevin Magnussen with the move at the inside. Wow. Who am I going for? I'm a, I'm a McLaren boy through and through. Through and through. But repairing the barriers. There you go. Charles Leclerc with the information. 10 to 15 minutes 
likely will give us a 10 minute warning and it will be a standing start. Ferrari are predicting, so that'll be interesting. How big was the crash? I mean, it was a big, it was a big shunt. Both drivers are absolutely fine though. I will keep you updated on what's happened to the Williams car and how much damage that Williams car has taken because that could be a very, very interesting uh, interesting thing that they have to contend with going into the Chinese Grand Prix if they're still not able to actually um, get a brand new chassis in i'm just trying to see if we've got any update on timings not nope uh, you left for less than 15 minutes and you've come back to a red flag in suzuka red flag for a second i thought logan did it again i mean daniel ricardo's at fault for this one unfortunately he just uh Alex Albon's got nowhere to go. Like, Alex Albon is is there. You could argue Alex Albon should sort of yield a little bit, but he's just kind of squeezed across and comes to an end. Antonio David, morning. Red flag, what happened? Daniel Ricciardo, Alex Albon, collision. Uh, well, between the first and second corners. So a little bit of a weird one, but red flag due to having to repair the barriers. Bit of a shunt for Daniel Ricciardo and Alex Albon to start the Japanese Grand Prix. The incident has been noted by race control, so it's going to be looked into. How is Daddy Lando doing? Still third place. Hovering around in third place, although the driver's out of the cars at this point. Fernando Alonso and Lance Stroll chilling in the Aston Martin garage. Just kind of waiting for confirmation from race control. Is the start things like that happen? Oh yeah, definitely. Definitely. It's uh, one of those things that does happen. There was just a lot going on, I feel. Daniel Ricciardo had a really dreadful start for RB. And then so did Yuki Tsunoda, to be fair. And it just felt like everything that could go wrong, did go wrong. And then once they got round the first corner, Lance Stroll's on his left, Alex Albon's on his right, not really anywhere for Daniel Ricciardo to go. So it just ends up being a little bit of a collision into nothing. Charles Leclerc. Ah, just checking it. Very nice from Charles Leclerc. Just double checking everyone is okay. Snowder on the radio. Also just asking. Asking about his teammate. Before the red flag came down. Max Verstappen on the radio as well. Okay. So yeah, it seemed... From the perspective of the drivers, at least, seemed like a big shunt. Because uh, all of the drivers kind of a little worried <laughs> by what's happened and what's going on. Max Verstappen sitting with Helmut Marco in the Ferrari, in the Ferrari, in the Red Bull Wars. Max Verstappen and Helmut Marco together in Japan. Couldn't see whether Christian Horner was anywhere to be seen. Luckily, it wasn't Yuki. I mean, yeah. Home Grand Prix would have been a little bit of a shame if it was Yuki Sonoda. I'm a big fan of who, Zipzak? Me? Thank you. Aaron, thank you for subscribing. Whilst we're here, why not hit the subscribe button? Hit the like button. There's nothing else going on. you got a little bit of time on your hands. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, see how we're doing. Shall I check in on the statistics? The statistics of it all. When did I start watching Formula 1? Uh, I was a 2008-2009 kind of guy. 
So Lewis Hamilton, Jensen Button, those kind of champions were my first straight into the Sebastian Vettel era. That was where I was at. I remember watching maybe a little bit of the 2007 season, but the first season I watched like in full absolutely every single race was a uh, 2009 that Jensen Button year at Braun. That was where I was where I was at my peak. Subscribe because he likes McLaren. It's a, it's a good as reason as any. <laughs> a good a reason as any. We're trying to hit uh, 100,000 subscribers. I know that that is like such a vain kind of goal, isn't it? But when it becomes so close, I just never thought it was going to be even possible. Like, I never even thought 100,000 subscribers was going to be within touching distance. And now that I'm over halfway there, just kind of, just kind of, itching for it a little bit don't you think that this bit of wall here that's slightly covered by the radio messages would be just so much better with a little bit of silver on there let's have a little look so again the like goal so far this season the highest amount of likes we have got on a stream is 535 535 that is the goal that is where we're at. Time to go back to bed. <laughs> nah, you've got, you've got... I mean, if you want like a 10-minute quick fire nap. There we go. Race control. Race will resume at 2.32. So there is your 10-minute warning. So if you're going to get a nap in, 10 minutes. That's all you got. 7 a.m.? I know. Early one. Silverware before Spurs. <laughs> <laughs> Love that. <laughs> Carl Lando could create something interesting here. I thought there was going to be a little bit of more of a uh, little bit more going on between those two. Should we go back to the race aboard just very quickly? Because Carlos Sainz did make a little bit of a lunge on Lando Norris towards uh, the first court quarter. The Ferrari was kind of there beside the McLaren. Got got his front wing ahead at one point. But then just couldn't quite keep it around. And uh, Lando Norris around the outside just made sure he got that position back. So there's definitely a little bit of back and forth. Fernando Alonso also on the soft compound side tried to kind of lunge in a little bit. But wasn't quite able to close down. It's going to be close. I was expecting a little bit more movement. Because if you think the top nine are as they were. So everybody in the top nine kept their position. Nobody actually uh, actually moved anywhere. But then Nico Hulkenberg up in football all inside FC. Thank you for subscribing, mate. Appreciate that. Um, but Hulkenberg, yeah, sneaking up into the point scoring place. It's Bottas behind as well in 11 plates. It was a really solid start for those two. They just jumped both of the RBs almost instantly. And then up into 10th and 11th place. Hulkenberg, if he can get points again, Hulkenberg. Three out of the first four races, Nico Hulkenberg would have picked up points. That is just ridiculous. Considering points are going to be pretty hard to come by. Well, I keep saying that. I keep saying points are going to be pretty hard to come by. Unless you're Nico Hulkenberg. He's just picking them up every single weekend at this point. Love to see it. Oh, Joe Guangyi. Uh, it's going to be a standing restart. There you go. Joe Guang Yu getting the confirmation on the radio. It's going to be a standing restart. So basically, as we were getting underway once again. Weather predictions for... Yeah, there were. That's a good point. The red flag, obviously, delaying the start to an extent. It does feel like a, effectively a delayed start at this point because we didn't get to see any kind of real pace from any of the cars. 
I think Max Verstappen only got to about turn eight, maybe nine, before the red flag was dropped. Not green yet, Jason, but about five minutes until we get back underway. Drivers are getting back into the cars, at least. So a little bit of a formation lap, of course. 50 laps still to go in this one. So don't adjust as of yet. Still a long way to go in this Japanese Grand Prix. But yeah, 50 laps we're going to have of racing. Lando Norris getting back into the McLaren. Actually, we haven't talked about the McLaren's livery for this weekend. I, I quite like it, you know. It's subtle, don't get me wrong. There's still a lot of exposed carbon fibre on uh, that McLaren car. But it's quite nice. It's quite nice. I don't mind it. Multiple driver changes at the summer break. Oh, yeah, definitely. There's going to be... Oh, you mean actually for this season? Ooh. Not sure about for this season, Mochi. But I can definitely see there being, you know, multiple driver changes in terms of 2025. I think there's going to be a lot of shifting, moving and making. In fact, I was uh, putting together a little... I'm going to try and put together a 2025 driver's predictions video, I think. Because I had one made before the season started. Then Lewis Hamilton uh, decided to drop a bombshell that he's moving to Ferrari next year. So all of my predictions for 2025 were effectively obsolete because I had Lewis Hamilton staying at Mercedes. I had uh, Carlos Sainz staying at Ferrari, and that was obviously all wrong. And then from there, there's the domino effect all the way down the grid. So there's lots to, lots to go through. I think I might try and do another one of those. What's my personal prediction for this time's podium? I mean, as it is, would be... Would be fine by me, to be honest with you. I think Red Bulls are clearly the quickest around here in Japan. They do just have that uh, benefit of pace around here. And Lando Norris on the podium. Yep. Sign me up. The repairing is done. Drivers are back in the cars. We're just waiting for a couple of its confirmation. In fact, I can pop the radio messages up for you. See, formation lap. Procedure the same. Kushik, thank you for subscribing. Carlos Sainz, you need to learn the gears in the formation lap. Interesting. Adrian, thank you for subscribing as well. Loads of new subscribers today for the Japanese Grand Prix. Is it just because it's at a different time? <laughs> People discovering the stream because they're uh, in the correct time zone. Howding, thank you very much for subscribing as well. Sid Hart, thank you for subscribing. God, flying. We're on a proper subscriber train at this point. I don't even know how many subscribers we're on now. I feel like I've lost, lost track of how many subscribers are coming in. In fact, I think at the beginning of today, we were on 68,300. We're already at 379. Another 20, 21 subscribers could pop us to 68,400. Puts us properly within touching distance of 70,000. That does. And people hitting the like button as well. Thank you so much for doing that. But we will be back on the way in two minutes time with the Japanese Grand Prix. Drivers just getting some burnouts for Lewis Hamilton. Track conditions are the same as before. Quick little second phase, second release for Lewis Hamilton as well. Four minutes to go. Four minutes to go. Joey Guanyu and Valtteri Bottas getting that confirmation on the radio. I do really love Steak. They're very good at uh, sorting out how much time the drivers have. They're very good at sort of confirming that. So where's Joey Guanyu as well? Maybe Joe just really needs to know. <laughs> how much time? How much time is this? But yeah, Joey Guanyu always. They're always first on the radio as well. Joey Guanyu gets like a 20 minute 
radio check before the race starts as well. So it's always good to kind of check in with Joe Guang Yu's radio if you're wondering how much time is left until the start of the Grand Prix. They basically count it down at stake. Anyway, Yuki Tsunoda, how many tyres will mix? Good question. Most will, I imagine, most will probably stay on the tyres that they used for the first lap. I mean, you do get a free tyre change, but it depends how many sets of tyres they've got left for the Grand Prix. Am I getting the LEGO W14? I would love to, to be honest with you. Whether it's within my budget is another question. Might be like a, a birthday present, Christmas present kind of thing. Towards the uh, towards the middle of the season, because uh, yeah, don't don't have a uh, two hundred quid to drop on a Lego model, just sort of in the back pocket, unfortunately. Any chance for Stapp and DNFs? Not at this point. Maybe maybe he can do similar to what Daniel Ricciardo did and wipe out himself and Sergio Perez at turn one. We'd have another red flag, but we would also see a different winner. Maybe a McLaren winner. Alex Albon, of course, not returning to his car at this moment in time. And I think just running through what happened with the Williams team, his race engineer there as well, just having a little chat for it all. Thank you, NZ Mira, for subscribing to the channel. 90 seconds. Fire up. Car's getting ready. Tire blankets are coming off as well. So we are bet better and ready to go. 5083, thank you for subscribing. DH Ruve you, thank you for subscribing. Got one again. I don't know. Roll subscribers today. Has podium. Maybe a little bit exaggerative. Has points would be just scintillating for them, to be honest. They need a couple of points to get back alongside uh, RB. But definitely within the realms of possibilities that Nika Hulkenberg can finish in 10th place in this one. The only thing I would keep an eye on is I know that they, that you know, their tire degradation has been fine so far this year in terms of the first three races. But tire degradation is very, very harsh in Japan. It's slightly different. The tire degradation comes from literally the track surface wearing away the tire. It's not really the temperature that is the problem, which is the case um, at a lot of other circuits. It's just quite a harsh surface that they've got underneath them. And therefore, ooh, a set of hard compound tires for Lewis Hamilton. Well, well, well. Goodness me. Anyway, shall we get back underway? Max Verstappen comes out of the pit lane. Sergio Perez just behind. We'll get confirmation of everybody's tyres as they come around the formation lap. But Lewis Hamilton on a fresh set of hard compound tyres. Interesting indeed. Maybe going for a much, much longer strategy stint i assume he's still gonna have to stop at some point don't get me wrong it's not gonna be like one of those alex albon and australia things where he's gonna be able to do the whole thing on a set of hard compound tires at least i don't think so oh george russell going for the same ocon going for the same as well so verstappen perez norris Staying on their used set of medium tyres. Carlos Sainz putting on a fresh set of mediums. Alonso on his used softs. Piastri on used mediums. Hamilton on a hard compound tyre. Fresh medium tyres for Charles Leclerc as well. George Russell goes on to a fresh set of hard compound tyres. Hulkenberg, Bottas and Sonoda have kept their soft compound tyres. They're a used set of soft compound tyres that they used at the start of the Grand Prix. One lap on them. Ocon is on a new set of hard compound tyres as well. Gasly on a new set of hard compound tyres. Lance Stroll, new set of softs. 
Kevin Magnussen, a fresh set of mediums. Logan Sargent goes on to the hard compound tyre as well. And Joe Guang Yu at the back of the pack on a fresh set of soft compound tyres. Interesting indeed. Okay, okay. So a little bit of a change up in terms of the tyre compounds that we saw from the start of the Grand Prix. People deciding that this red flag is an opportunity because technically you have done your tire change. Lewis Hamilton, maybe they are then. Maybe Hamilton and Russell are going to go all the way to the end on these hard compound tires. I'd be surprised. It just feels like a long way to go. 50 laps going to have to do on those hard compound tires. There's Daniel Ricciardo back in the RB garage. Liam Lawson standing behind him. Just a little poetic image there of Daniel Ricciardo and Liam Lawson. But here we are. Cars coming around the final bend and putting themselves back on to their starting positions. We will get 50 laps of racing because obviously this formation lap does count. They are burning fuel after all. So not really their fault that refueling is no longer available in Formula One. What's happened to Yuki Tsunoda? Huh? Oh, I think the tracker is just having a little bit of a mess up but green flag waved five red lights once again and let's restart shall we the japanese grand prix is back underway and a much better start from yuki sonoda i think no a slow start from yuki sonoda once again okay Verstappen comes around the first corner, still in the lead. Lando Norris under pressure from Carlos Sainz once again. Fernando Alonso tries to go around the outside, but stays in fifth place. Esteban Ocon makes the move. Wow, okay. Lewis Hamilton on the hard compound side, just trying to keep it cool. Keep it cool. Wow. What is happening here? The uh, lap time is completely gone. So it's Lando, Sainz, Alonso, Piastri then behind Alonso as well. Charles Leclerc is there. Yeah, Charles Leclerc jumping up in front of Lewis Hamilton by the looks of things. Hamilton and Russell slotting in just behind. Esteban Ocon up into 10th place. What on earth happened to Nico Hulkenberg? No, that can't be the order. Logan Sargent's to the back of the pack. Where's Yuki Tsunoda gone? I think the tracker is just broken. Just broken. But I'll keep you updated once I know. I think once everyone comes around and completes uh, a lap, it will sort itself out a little bit. Yeah, the tracker is broken. The tracker for the Sky Stream is also broken. I think it's uh, something at the circuit, unfortunately, and not something in terms of what I can do. There you go. Once they complete a lap, it should sort itself out. And it has sorted itself out. There we are. Hamilton in eighth place. Yuki Tsunoda, blistering start from Yuki Tsunoda. Ninth place now for the Japanese driver. George Russell in 10th. Esteban Ocon up into 11th place. Bottas 12, Stroll, Gasly, Magnus and Joe Hulkenberg were an absolute nightmare of a start. Remember, he started up in 10th place. It was looking like Hulkenberg was going to be in the points. Dreadful start from Nico Hulkenberg all the way to the back. Ocon on the radio. Oh, Ocon on the radio. Pierre gave me a hit. Oh, dear, dear, dear. Got to remember that Yuki Tsunoda on the soft compound tyres will have to pit. Whereas the two Mercedes on the hard and Ocon on the hard as well, in and amongst it, won't have to. So 
The dream for Yuki Tsunoda here would be to jump Lewis Hamilton and start running away from that pack, but not looking likely at this moment in time. Hamilton's tyres in a good window. Yuki Tsunoda a second and a bit behind Hamilton as well, so won't get DRS. Sergio Perez outside of DRS range as well. No, does get DRS down the straight to Sergio Perez just within that second. Carlos Sainz also with DRS. Alonso with DRS. And, oh, here's Yuki Tsunoda versus George Russell. Russell's going to try and make a move down into the turn one. And Russell gets the position back. Yuki Tsunoda sent back to 10th place then. And Valtteri Bottas behind in that stake. Sauber, the green emanating off of that. Oh, Hulkenberg just... Oh my god, Hulkenberg with an absolutely horrible start. That might be the worst start that we have seen so far this season from Nico Hulkenberg. It goes from 10th all the way down. And then Valtteri Bottas gets caught out by George Russell. Russell steams in. Oh. Gasly and Ocon also come to blows with one another. Hefty hit between the two of them. <laughs> Teammate just absolutely smacked into the side of him there. And not much that... The Alpine driver could do his teammate just sort of shunts into him. But Gasly in 14th place now. Ocon up into 12th. Hulkenberg the real loser then. An absolutely terrible start for the German driver. And an incredible start for the Japanese one. Yuki Tsunoda up into the points once again. Do they have DRS now? They do indeed. Thank you Apple Zero for subscribing. DRS activated after just one lap this season remember. So, is indeed ready. Sonoda is doing amazing for RB. Massively stand out. Yeah, RB, uh, Yuki Sonoda's really clicking so far this year. Made a little video about it just before the Japanese Grand Prix. Predicted, of course. Just knew Yuki Sonoda was going to have an exceptional Japanese Grand Prix. So, made a little video on him in the week. Uh, also made a little video on Red Bull and the Red Bull situation. Which driver I feel like is the best option to go in. Because it doesn't feel like it's going to be Daniel Ricciardo. Oh! And there's Sergio Perez off the track. As he goes underneath the bridge. Ooh, that was a little bit sketchy from Sergio Perez there. Off the track in his Red Bull car. Lost a good chunk of time to Max Verstappen, who's just disappeared off into the distance now. Leads this Grand Prix by two seconds. Lando Norris also then two seconds behind as well. I think the car's towards the front. Just realising they don't want to be caught up in the turbulent air of the car ahead of them because they need to hold on to their tyres for a little bit longer. Mainly because Hamilton and Russell are there to pounce in the background. Let's have a little look then. Oh, just understeered off the track, did Sergio Perez. Hopefully he didn't do any damage to the underside of his Red Bull, but really kicked up some dust, and that won't help with the tyre degradation at all. Now Max will cook. Yeah, it's... it's uh... Sergio Perez has made a mistake. He's opened up a gap to his teammate. He's no longer within the DRS range. <laughs> Looks kind of done. Kevin Magnussen. DRS open behind Pierre Gasly. Oh, Valtteri Bottas. Decides to pit. So does Nico Hulkenberg. So Bottas and Hulkenberg into the pits together. Oh my god, an eight second stop for Valtteri Bottas. What does the man have to do? What does the man have to do <laughs> to get a pit stop that doesn't literally ruin his race? <laughs> Jesus. What happened to Hulkenberg? The most atrocious start that you'll likely see this year. It was so slow. 
He went from 10th place to almost back of the pack just during the pit, uh, during the, the start. I know it's a four second stop for Valtteri Rottas. What on earth were the commentary team saying? They said it was eight seconds. No, four second stop for Valtteri Rottas. Again, not incredible, but four seconds is at least manageable at that point. Yuki Tsunoda is also going to box box. Box box for Yuki Tsunoda. He comes into the pits. Covering off Valtteri Bottas, maybe? Joe Guan Yu in the pits as well. You're assuming that Tsunoda's going to come out comfortably ahead of Bottas. To be fair, he's going to have a lovely bit of open track, is Yuki Tsunoda. Or not. Or not. Valtteri Bottas going to come out, and Valtteri Bottas is ahead. Oh, that is absolutely terrible from Yuki. The undercut from Valtteri Bottas coming into effect. And Valtteri Bottas instead now is the driver that is going to have a lovely bit of open track in front of him. Oh, that is not... Well, it's not going to help Yuki Tsunoda's race whatsoever. Kevin Magnussen, though, making moves... And a very nice move around the outside of Pierre Gasly. Gets Kevin Magnussen up into 12th place. Drops Gasly down to 13th. Oh, Yuki Tsunoda. That is tragic, unfortunately, for the Japanese driver. Now stuck behind Valtteri Bottas. Carlos Sainz. I can see Lando struggling a bit. The Ferrari just... just Looking at the back of the McLaren, waiting for an opportunity to pounce. Not yet within DRS range. No, does get within DRS range, Carlos Sainz. Apologies. Within that one second, gets DRS down towards turn one, of course. Carlos Sainz hunting down Norris. We've also got Charles Leclerc hunting down Oscar Piastri. It is the McLarens under fire from the Ferraris at this moment in time. Logan Sargent having a little look at Pierre Gasly as well. Gasly becoming a little bit of a sitting duck in the Alpine at this moment in time. Struggling to keep it going. It just seems to be so much slower than the rest on the straights because Kevin Magnussen made the move look fairly comfortable. Logan Sargent then also sneaking, trying to have a little look at the Alpine. Oh, and a little bit wide from Oscar Piastri. Charles Leclerc closing in. Oh. <laughs> I love GP, man. I love GP. Oh, dear. So Max Verstappen asked for uh, a, a change to the front wing during the red flag and uh now is struggling with his front wing and, and gp's like i won't say i told you so but next time just bloody listen to me would you <laughs> love that <laughs> I love GP, man. GP has so much personality compared to, like, so many of the other race engineers. Maybe it's just because you don't really hear a lot from the other race engineers. Oh, George Russell starting to have some vibrations on his steering. That's not very fun at all. Four seconds stop by the sake. Standard is rapid. <laughs> Not sure I can label it as rapid, but yeah. Max already has almost a three second gap. Not even 10 laps in. Yeah, yeah. But we all we all knew Verstappen was going to fly away from the pack. Let's be fair. The only person that was going to keep within touching distance was going to be Sergio Perez. And Sergio Perez then made a mistake. So he uh, dropped himself out of it. We are going to have to see Verstappen pit, though. 
Sergio Perez will pit, Norris will pit, Sainz will pit. Like, all of the guys on the hard compound tyre, Hamilton and Russell will... Hamilton will effectively take the lead of the Grand Prix at one point. Uh, unless he drops sort of 20 seconds off the lead. Where is he? 14 and a half seconds off the lead is Lewis Hamilton. So he will take the lead of the Grand Prix if everybody pits around about now, which is when we're expecting them to. High degradation on the medium runners. Yeah, we are starting to see a little bit of a struggle from Lando Norris in particular. Carlos Sainz just waiting for an opportunity to pounce, it does feel like. Oscar Piastri in a similar situation. The problem is they're on slightly scrubbed medium tyres. Obviously, it had to re-warm up a scrubbed set of tyres where Ferrari put on a fresh set of mediums. Oh, there's a little move from Logan Sargent. Yes, indeed. Logan Sargent makes it stick, gets his Williams up into 13th place. And you know what? Is Logan Sargent maybe in contention for a point scoring place? No. Lance Stroll about 10, 12 seconds up the up the road. So going to need a, a little bit. Although Lance Stroll on the soft compound tires does have to box. So it's Esteban Ocon who is the highest hard compound tire runner of those kind of back of the pack eight that we've got just outside of the points at the moment. Lance Stroll in 10th place, but will have to pit. Lando Norris is getting a box box call. It's a tiny little bit early. I was expecting it to be around about now, but then we had three laps taken off. So a little bit early. Nope, Lando Norris in. It was not, not a, a red herring. It is a box box for Lando Norris. He comes into the bits. So let's see then. Lando Norris needs to come out. I think he's going to come out just behind Lance Stroll. There is Lance Stroll. Oh, Esteban Ocon's coming there. Nope. More than enough space. So Lando Norris now in five and a half seconds worth of space to Lance Stroll. You're assuming Lance Stroll is also going to have to pit at some point soon. So not a bad choice of pit stop there from McLaren. Fresh set of hard compound tyres. Now can just really lean on them. You'd expect. Oh my god, Joe Guan Yu in the pits. And a 5.4 second stop. Mamma mia. <laughs> but Joe Guan Yu will come out in 18th place all by himself. And uh a good chunk back from the rest of the pack. Hamilton and Russell still there. Hamilton now 17 and a half seconds off of Stappen. I think what Red Bull might be doing is just leaving Max Verstappen out long enough that he'll come out in front of Lewis Hamilton, to be honest with you. I think that will be the play. What happened to Yuki? Just turned in. Uh, went for a pit stop, and it didn't really work out. So Yuki Sonoda, we would hope, would actually be in front of Valtteri Bottas. But he is not. So. Hey, look, it's not over yet for Yuki Sonoda by any stretch of the imagination. But Bottas battling. Oh. Lovely little move. Kevin Magnussen making some waves. And Ocon then also having a little fight with Logan Sargent. Piastri, Bottas and Gasly now all in touch and distance. Lewis Hamilton on the radio. Shall I let George buy? Is George Russell maybe just the faster Mercedes at this point in time. Closing the gap and Lewis Hamilton just being like, you can have it if he wants. <laughs> can I have it? Yeah, you can have a go. How did Yuki go from 9 to 16? Pit stops. Yeah, poor pit stop from Yuki Snowder, unfortunately. Slightly mistimed. But it's not over yet by any stretch of the imagination. He's got ahead of Pierre Gasly now, so Bottas is 
the target. Oh, and Joe Guang, you back in the pits. Is it an issue for Joe Guang Yu? Looks like that might be the end of his race. Lewis Hamilton lets George Russell by. So Russell becomes the lead Mercedes and the lead hard compound tyre runner. Fernando Alonso is also struggling. Or is he coming to the pits? Ah, Fernando Alonso into the pits. I was going to say, well, I don't know. Is he dropping down the leaderboard so quickly? But there is Alonso. Swapping those soft compound tires, a fresh set of mediums go on to Fernando Alonso's car. He's going to try his best to come out in front of Kevin Magnussen. Is he going to be able to do it? Yes, he is indeed. And Oscar Piastri getting past Esteban Ocon in the background as well. It's a real mix of cars out there right now. Lots of drivers really out of position thanks to the red flag and thanks to lots of different tire compounds going back onto the cars. Joe Guang Yu, though, is going to be out of the Grand Prix. An issue for him. Yuki Sonoda getting impatient behind the Alpine of Pierre Gasly. Is this going to be a nice move around the outside? It is indeed. Oh, a lovely move. As they're going through the S's as well from Yuki Sonoda. Yuki Sonoda is not holding back today. Here's Oscar Piastri up the inside as well of Logan Sargent. And Oscar Piastri on a tear. Now getting past Kevin Magnussen as well. So Oscar Piastri back up into the top 10. Into ninth place, in fact. And hunting down Fernando Alonso. But Joe Guanyu confirmed out of the Grand Prix. Verstappen and Perez then. Let's keep an eye on them. Perez five seconds behind Verstappen. But Verstappen does now have a 90, nearly 20 second gap to Russell. So it's getting towards the point where with a good pit stop at least, Verstappen will come back out in front of the two Mercedes. The Mercedes will be a little bit of a headache though for those other drivers. Perez, Sainz, Leclerc. Lando Norris, fastest lap of the Grand Prix so far on the fresh set of hard compound tyres. So starting to find a little bit of pace now, Lando Norris, a 136.7. Couple of times quicker than Max Verstappen in the lead, to be fair, was Lando Norris on that last lap. An absolute melee of cars here. Ocon, Bottas and Sonoda all fighting for position. Lance Stroll. Has dropped down to 15th place. He'll also be trying to make his way back through this pack as well. Where is Lance Stroll? Nearly three seconds off the back of Yuki Tsunoda, though. Ooh. Carlos Sainz boxing by the sounds of things. Sergio Perez as well. So Sergio Perez and Carlos Sainz are going to come in together. The Red Bull ahead of the Ferrari. I think they are still going to come out behind the Mercedes, though, because George Russell only 20 seconds off the lead of Max Verstappen and a big gap to Perez and then another big gap to Carlos Sainz behind as well. Just be interesting to see where Lando Norris is in all of this as well. Of course, trying to hold on to his podium place. There is Lando Norris going ahead and Sergio Perez. Yeah, good chunk off of Lando Norris, actually. Worked out very well for Lando Norris indeed. Four and a half seconds from Norris to Perez now and Carlos Sainz behind as well. And remember, Carlos Sainz was right on the back of Lando Norris. Oh, and here we go. Bottas on Ocon. And Bottas gets through up into 12th place. Come on, Valtteri. Let's see what you can do in that stake Salba car. Yuki Sonoda, though. He got past one Alpine through this corner here. As they go through the S's, he's going to go try and get through Ocon as well. Not this time. Not this time. But Yuki Tsunoda and Valtteri Bottas both on the attack, making their way back through the pack. Logan Sargent in 11th place. Kevin Magnussen actually rounding out the point scoring places in 10th. Does feel like that point scoring place is up for grabs with Lance Stroll not quite clicking as of yet. Here is Max Verstappen then, box a box. 
21 second gap to George Russell. Is he going to be able to do it? Charles Leclerc is also likely going to come in. See, Charles Leclerc comes around the final corner. No, Charles Leclerc stays out. A brake issue for Joe Guanyi. Thank you very much. Hadn't heard that one yet. Let's see then. Max Verstappen is going to come out. And Max Verstappen is going to be in the mix with the Mercedes. There's Lando Norris making a move. Gordon Lando around the outside of Lewis Hamilton. Yes, love that move from Lando. Up into fourth place. And Lando Norris now just a second behind Max Verstappen. Come on, Russell. Do us a favor. Take out Max. <laughs> do us a favor. Do us a favor, please. Nah, Max Verstappen going to make that move and gets past George Russell. There we are. Max Verstappen back up to where he wanted to be second place. It did feel like Max Verstappen was going to come out ahead of the Mercedes. Maybe a slightly slower stop from the Red Bull team or not quite where they were there. Like the stream. Thank you so much, London is Red. I can't remember what I said now. The target. If, if you want the Japanese Grand Prix to be the highest liked stream so far this year in terms of a race it has to beat bahrain but bahrain got 535 Ooh. likes so 535 is the like target if you can beat 535 likes japan 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 will take the uh the lead oh sergio perez oh that is a lovely little move on Lewis Hamilton. Round the 130R as well. Okay. Sergio Perez coming to the party. Does not want to be left in the dust of Lando Norris. And now Sergio Perez is going to be behind Lando. Lando Norris, though, making the move on George Russell. Getting back up into third place. So Lando Norris into third couple of seconds off Max Verstappen now, though. So Verstappen still effectively leading this race because Charles Leclerc yet to stop on the mediums. We'll have to swap those out, you'd assume. Valtteri Bottas is going to make his move on Logan Sargent. And it's a good move indeed. Gets himself up into 11th place. Yuki Sonoda just behind, next in the queue. It does feel like Bottas goes past, then Sonoda, and they're kind of toing and froing. Although Lance Stroll has closed the gap to the back of Yuki Sonoda. On the medium compound tire is Lance Stroll as well. So Yuki Sonoda might not have too much that he can really do about it. Uh, Sonoda wants to get in front of Sargent before he has to contend with Lance Stroll behind, though, because he doesn't want Valtteri Bottas to disappear off into the distance. That is the battle for the point scoring places. Bottas now six temps behind Kevin Magnussen, and you will assume get past the Haas fairly swiftly. Sergio Perez going for it again. Sergio Perez ahead of George Russell now, and absolutely flying is Sergio Perez, making moves left, right, and center, not even waiting to get the move done down in turn one like the majority do. Sergio Perez getting the, the move done around the 130R. Incredible stuff. Pyro, thank you for subscribing. Thank you very much indeed for all the new subscriptions during the stream today. Tires are dropping. Front right is dead, says Lewis Hamilton. Well, there's a long way to go. 35 laps left to go. George Russell and Lewis Hamilton on those tyres that they put on during the red flag. I-55, thank you for subscribing as well. Norris could get Verstappen. Uh, it's hopeful. It is hopeful. I mean, there's a gap now between Leclerc and Verstappen of... 1.7 seconds. So if Charles Leclerc can slow down Max Verstappen, then maybe just maybe. Here's Carlos Sainz making a move on Lewis Hamilton. Is he going to be able to get it done? Yes, he is indeed. Carlos Sainz moves up into sixth place and is hunting down Sergio Perez and Lando Norris. 
Lando Norris, the strategy for the McLaren was absolutely perfect. Managed to jump in front of Sergio Perez. Carlos Sainz, remember, was all over the back of the McLaren. Now seems fairly far adrift. Was it five seconds or so, the gap? No, seven seconds between Norris and Sainz. So worked out pretty much perfectly for Lando Norris. Ooh, Carlos Sainz is a really nice move, actually. Through the hairpin, just goes up the inside, gets himself alongside the Mercedes whilst going around the hairpin, then just sticks himself on the inside line. Very, very nice indeed. Leclerc, please hold Verstappen. The problem is... He is on 18 lap old medium compound tires and Max Verstappen is on an almost fresh set of mediums. It's going to be very tough. Gaz, thank you for subscribing to the stream. Ericsson as well, thank you for subscribing. We are live for all the qualifying, sprint qualifying, sprint races and races this season. So if you subscribe... Especially with back-to-back -back sprint weekends coming up in China and Miami. We are going to be live for all of it. Aisha, thank you as well for subscribing. Let's see then. Max Verstappen, we're on board with him down towards turn one. DRS wide open. He's gaining, he's gaining, he's gaining, he's gaining, he's gone. And takes the lead of the Grand Prix. Charles Leclerc dropping back down to second place. And Max Verstappen... Gets it done. Carlos Sainz now all over the back of George Russell. Could these two end up being teammates next year? Oh, Hamilton Radio. Hamilton wants a change of strategy. <laughs> Hamilton begging for a change of tyres at this point. But they're going to have to wait until there's a little bit of a window for them to pit into. So where's Hamilton? 14 seconds off the lead. So where would he come out? Yeah, at the moment, he'd come out behind Kevin Magnussen, behind Bottas, behind Sargent. So he just needs to keep going for another couple of laps or so. Carlos Sainz going to make the move on George Russell. And there it is, the move done. Carlos Sainz moves back up into fifth place. How did Carlos Sainz drop to sixth? Uh, the Mercedes are on hard compound tyres, so he dropped behind them in the pit stops, but now is back up in front. And uh, Charles Leclerc is yet to have stopped. You can see Charles Leclerc 19 laps on the medium tyre to Carlos Sainz is six. So Charles Leclerc will pit, and then Carlos Sainz will go back up into fourth place, which was where he was before. Ferrari doing Ferrari strategies. Does seem like Leclerc has kind of been thrown to the lions a little bit at this point, doesn't it? Charles Leclerc is going to be so far adrift of this group. And Fernando Alonso. Oh, hello, Fernando Alonso. Move on Lewis Hamilton. Yes, Alonso up into seventh place on the medium tyre. Lewis Hamilton now has just got to be screaming in that helmet for a new set of tyres. Problem is, though, where do they do? Lewis Hamilton. So Lewis Hamilton pits now. He goes from 17 seconds off the lead to... What, 40 seconds off the lead? 37, 38, you know, that kind of thing. So, doesn't really help him in any way, does it? Like, he's not going to actually gain or lose anything because he's going to still be in and around Bottas and Magnussen. He's going to be able to take those over. So, actually, pitting right now for Lewis Hamilton doesn't achieve anything. Interesting. Esteban Ocon, given the, the go-ahead, P3 
Push now, push now. Ocon has just come in for a fresh set of hard compound tires as well. So going to try his best, but is now 20 seconds off the back of Nico Hulkenberg. So Ocon and Gasly falling to the back of the pack. The Alpines felt like they were amongst it, but yeah, just not really coming to fruition for the Alpines today. Ocon seemed like he was kind of around about ready. George Russell coming into the pits then. The window has opened for the Mercedes team to be able to pit him because he's going to be able to get back out in front of Kevin Magnussen. This is the thing, right? You need to be able to get out in front of this real bulk of cars. Hulkenberg, Magnussen, Bottas, Sargent, Sonoda. You just don't want to be in that mix with those because then you're in a real headache of a situation. But Russell out in front of Nico Hulk. Oh my goodness me! A lot of pit stops there. So Magnussen, Bottas. <sighs> so Sonoda goes into 11th place. Lance Stroll also moves up. Ocon drops back down into it geez louise is a a melee of cars happening there but yuki sonoda out in front of that pack hulkenberg kind of slightly out of position there because he did not pit but sonoda out in 11th place and looking like the most likely driver to pick up points lewis hamilton dives into the pits lance stroll ocon magnus and bottas sergeant and gasly weird weird stuff going on towards the back of the pack but Yuki Tsunoda coming out on top of it we have Lance Stroll behind can he hold off the Aston Martin of Lance Stroll half a second between Tsunoda and Stroll at this moment in time but because they've all pitted Lewis Hamilton can also now pit as well so Hamilton will come out in ninth place what happens to Joe, Ricardo, and Albon? Joe has some sort of engine problem. Oh my god, it's a proper melee of cars in the pit lane. Ooh. Yuki Sonoda comes out in front. Kevin Magnussen behind. The Williams of Sargent is released into Bottas. Goodness me. But yeah, an absolutely brilliant pit stop from RB. Managed to get Yuki Tsunoda back out in front of all of that. Yeah, that is a stunning pit stop from the RB team. Got Yuki Tsunoda into the position where he's now leading that pack. Perfect. Really, really perfect job from RB there. And Yuki Tsunoda now has to make that count and keep that position in front of Lance Stroll if he can. Has managed to do so for a lap now. Lance Stroll, though, still with DRS behind the Japanese driver. We'll have to see how that plays out. Uh, sorry, Joe Guan Yu with an engine problem or brake issue as well. Basically, it all went wrong for Joe Guan Yu at stake. Had to retire. Uh, and Daniel Ricciardo took himself and Alex Albon out of the race on lap one, causing a red flag. Interesting, interesting. Sergio Perez on Leclerc incoming? Most definitely so. Charles Leclerc still on that set of medium tyres. 23 laps he's done on that set of medium tyres, Charles Leclerc. Putting in an absolute shift with those tyres. Carlos Sainz also closing the gap to Lando Norris at this moment in time as well. So they're going to be back fighting one another. They were fighting before the pit stops. Then Lando Norris came in. Carlos Sainz came in a, a long time afterwards. But they're back on the same part of the track once again. And Lando Norris will be under pressure from the Ferrari of Carlos Sainz once again as well. George Russell chasing Piastri and flying as well. George Russell at 
to Oscar Piastri's 137-1. So George Russell absolutely blistering pace from the Mercedes car. Still a long way to go, though. 11 seconds behind Oscar Piastri. Lewis Hamilton complaining again on the radio. How on earth did I lose so much time? Just very slow, unfortunately, Lewis. Nika Hulkenberg, 139.2. If that's his pace, Yuki Tsunoda is going to also catch up to the back of the Haas fairly swiftly and probably get himself back up into the point scoring places. Oh! Oh, and after doing such a good job, Charles Leclerc then makes a mistake. Charles Leclerc makes a mistake down in towards turn nine. And Charles Leclerc's tyres look shot a bit. Sergio Perez obviously pounces on that mistake from Charles Leclerc. And Lando Norris is now right under the rear wing as well. Lando Norris box this lap. Eh? Lando Norris wants to stay out that little bit longer. Let's stay with Lando Norris, please. And see if he does come in. He does follow Charles Leclerc into the pits, though. This is going to be... I think George Russell flying is what Mercedes... Oh, sorry, McLaren are worried about. Mercedes going very, very quickly. Come on, get out, get out, get out, get out. Oh, the Ferrari's still in front. Charles Leclerc's coming out in front then. And Charles Leclerc's done a really good job on that stint. And there is George Russell, who has got ahead of Lando Norris. Lando Norris now behind George Russell in all of that. Russell put in some absolutely stunning laps there, it has to be said. George Russell absolutely flying. You'd imagine that these guys are just going to be on these tyres until the end. So George Russell taking that position... But Lando Norris with slightly fresher tyres. It's going to be a very interesting battle between these two. Charles Leclerc. Oh, if Charles Leclerc hadn't have made that mistake, he'd be in such a good position right now. Volki, thank you so much, mate, for the subscription. Thank you, everyone, for the new subscriptions. If you are new, hit the subscribe button. Leave a like, maybe. 535 likes is the highest that we've had on a stream so far this 2024 season. Can we beat that? That is up to you. So Max Verstappen now leads from Sergio Perez by 10 seconds. Carlos Sainz is in third place. Now, all of those guys are going to have to stop again. Verstappen, Perez, Sainz, Alonso will have to come in once more. Oscar Piastri also, you would imagine, will need another set of tyres. But then Leclerc, Russell, Norris... Might be able to. Oh my goodness me, Lando Norris. Don't do that to me. That was a move from miles back from Lando Norris. I thought they were going to collide. But no. Lovely little move from Lando Norris. Up into seventh place. Back behind Charles Leclerc. And Lando Norris is once again trying to hunt down Charles Leclerc and get past Going to be interesting to see what the McLaren can do in comparison to the Ferrari. Of course, he was battling with Carlos Sainz earlier as well. Russell defend like a lion? No. <laughs> yeah, you were absolutely right, Rowley. Norris had a Russell within one lap. That seemed mental, though. Russell was going so well. But then... Straight away, Russell loses the position to Norris. Uh, 
Let's see then. Charles Leclerc is 33 seconds off the lead. 23 seconds off Sergio Perez, though. Uh, this, apart from Max Verstappen, who once again is absolutely flying at this point, there could be quite a lot of battles towards the end of this Grand Prix from sort of Sergio Perez backwards, to be honest with you. Yuki Tsunoda is also closing in on Nico Hulkenberg by about two seconds a lap at this point. Hulkenberg, 22 laps on those hard compound tyres. So Yuki Tsunoda also looking like he's going to be able to hold on to the point scoring place, although Lance Stroll within a second still of Yuki Tsunoda. But just Lance Stroll not looking like too much of a threat to the Japanese driver on board with the Aston Martin right now. Yuki Tsunoda in 11th place. DRS wide open for Lance Stroll, but never within striking distance of the RB car. And to be fair, the RB pit stop was absolutely perfect. It's been able to get Yuki Tsunoda up into the best place to score points. They've then also kind of disappeared a little bit. Kevin Magnussen has dropped a couple of seconds back off Lance Stroll. Bottas and Sargent with him. And the Alpines really far back from there as well. So it is just Lance Stroll versus Yuki Tsunoda, in my opinion at least, for who is going to finish in 10th place. And that final point up for grabs. Max Verstappen, though, continuing to dominate. Max Verstappen watching Netflix. Probably just having a little conversation with GP. <laughs> yeah, like that's why GP and Max Verstappen have such a good relationship. They can just have a little bit of a chat for a couple of hours every Sunday. Let's have a little look at Charles Leclerc versus Oscar Piastri's lap times. So Piastri a 137.7. Leclerc, a 136.3. It's looking very nice for Charles Leclerc at this moment in time. Lando Norris has dropped out of the DRS range of the Ferrari as well. Looking very nice for Charles Leclerc, actually. Very nice indeed. It's going to be close between Perez and Leclerc at this moment. If Perez were to stop. But Perez would be on the fresh attire. But Charles Leclerc looking like he could sneak a podium place if things go well. Any update on the Stroll pit infringement? No, actually. Nothing on that as of yet. So Charles Leclerc just being let to know that everyone in front of him will need to stop once again. So Verstappen, Perez, Sainz, Alonso, Piastri... All will need to pit once more. But Charles Leclerc holding on. Looking pretty good. 24 laps on Hulk's tyres. Yeah, but 24 laps while the car was still heavy is the thing. Like, we're going to see a few of these guys, like Charles Leclerc, for instance, we're going to see do 20 odd laps on these hard compound tyres. But the car gets lighter as the race progresses. It obviously burns off the fuel that is inside the car and therefore becomes a little bit less stressful on the tyres. The fact that Nika Hulkenberg has done that stint at this point in the Grand Prix is just absolutely mind-boggling to me because uh, he's going to lose so much time and is losing so much time at this point. Nika Hulkenberg, 139.9 to Yuki Tsunoda's 137.3 on the last lap. So Yuki Tsunoda already three and a half seconds behind Hulkenberg. Oh, and Oscar Piastri, a little mistake from the McLaren driver. Oh, that's not great. Especially because Charles Leclerc is now within a couple of seconds of Oscar Piastri. Piastri is going to come out behind all this big group. We'll have the fresh tyres, though. It's going to be interesting to see what Piastri can do at the end of this race. going to be... Right in and amongst it with the Mercedes cars, isn't he? Uh... Not great. Charles Leclerc, Lando Norris gaining on Oscar Piastri actually in the background as Oscar Piastri comes 
Back around once again. Carlos Sainz on the radio. Carlos Sainz being told he is indeed faster than Checo. Keep pushing it is marginal. It's a couple of attempts, and he's still five seconds off the back of the Mexican, but positives are positives nonetheless. Charles Leclerc nearly a second quicker than Sergio Perez on that last lap. And Charles Leclerc, where is he? 32 seconds off the lead. Sergio Perez, 11 seconds off the lead. It's going to be close between those. Obviously, Sergio Perez is going to be on the fresher tyre at the end, but still. Gearbox problem for Jay. There you go. Confirmation. We'll take that as gospel. Science is pushing like a madman. Needs to at this point. Might as well. Getting right towards the end of that stint on the medium compound tyres. May as well use up the last of the rubber that's there. It's going to have 20 laps or so on a hard set of tyres to Charles Leclerc and Lando Norris that are going to have to do, you know, nearly 30 laps on the set of hard compound tyres at the end. It's looking pretty good for Carlos Sainz to be able to push hard and make some overtakes at the end of the Grand Prix if needed. Alpine butchered up the strategy. I mean, yes, but also that car's just absolutely shocking, isn't it? Just uh, absolutely awful at this point. A lot of turbulence. Oh. The helmet becoming a problem for George Russell as well. It's never fun. Piastri in, Piastri out, and Piastri 12 seconds off Lewis Hamilton. So 20 laps left, or 21 laps left. 12 seconds, or now 13 seconds for Piastri. See what he can do. Here's the battle then. Yuki Tsunoda has finally caught up to the back of Nico Hulkenberg, trying to make the move around the Haas. Hulkenberg just positions his car, causes Tsunoda a headache. Tsunoda trying his best to try and make a move around turn two and turn three. Not this time for Yuki Tsunoda. Needs to be careful because... Oh, the pit lane infringement for Lance Stroll is under investigation. Go on, Yuki, round the outside. There is Yuki Tsunoda up into 10th place. What a move from the Japanese driver. Woo. Yuki Tsunoda on fire today. Couple of those really solid overtakes. One on Gasly a little bit earlier on in this Grand Prix. And now on Nico Hulkenberg as well. Lance Stroll then. This is going to be a test of him. Fernando Alonso box box as we see Sergio Perez also into the bits. So Perez is in. Carlos Sainz stays out. Fernando Alonso is into the pits as well. So Charles Leclerc is going to be released. Lando Norris also is going to come out ahead of Sergio Perez. Yes. Lando Norris ahead of Perez just. There's Russell and Hamilton behind too. But Sergio Perez on the fresh tyres. The Red Bull surely is going to charge at this point. Ooh. Kevin Magnussen weaving on the straight, says Valtteri Bottas. Yeah, he's a little bit... Mm. It's a little bit... A little bit of even. Verstappen. Box, box. Here we go, then. The race leader is coming into the pits. I imagine Carlos Sainz will also come in. Let's have a little look at the Ferrari. No, Carlos Sainz stays out. Interesting. Carlos Sainz then is going to lead the Grand Prix for a few laps or so. 
gap between Sainz and Verstappen, five and a bit seconds. Sergio Perez on Lando Norris going to make the move. And there goes Sergio Perez back up into fourth place as expected. And now is a second and a half off Charles Leclerc. Should be able to get there. Max Verstappen ahead of Leclerc though already. So very well-timed pit stop from Max Verstappen and the Red Bull team. Get out back in front. Bad Bird Photography, thank you so much for subscribing. Massively appreciate that. If you are new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. Massively helps out us. If you are enjoying the stream, hit the like button. Aiming to try and break the like record, although Bahrain is so tricky. Carlos Sainz wants to box soon. And uh, I think he is right to want to box soon, to be honest with you, because he's going to come out in and amongst the Mercedes cars. So it's going to be a little bit of a battle for Carlos Sainz at the end of the Grand Prix. He's going to have to try and make his way through the pack a little bit. Sergio Perez on board behind Charles Leclerc. Is he going to make the move to the right-hand side of the track? Sergio Perez moves back up into third place. Sergio Perez also with the fastest lap of the Grand Prix, 133.9. That is a very, very swift overtake from Sergio Perez. And he gets himself back behind his teammate, Max Verstappen. Carlos Sainz, oh, makes a mistake at the final chicane. Just gets too deep into 16, doesn't quite make 17, does Carlos Sainz. That's not going to help him out. And he's trying to keep in front. But he's gone back around once again, hasn't pitted as of yet for the Ferrari team. There we go, box, box for Carlos Sainz. The call comes... And Sainz will come into the pit soon. 18 laps left to go, though. Ah, Carlos Sainz not wanting to be stuck behind Esteban Ocon, who is a lap down at this point, but... Fresh set of medium tyres on the Alpine could have got in the way of the Ferrari. So, Carlos Sainz comes into the pits. Max Verstappen is released back into the lead of this Grand Prix. Sergio Perez is also going to make his way down the pit lane. Leclerc and Norris making their way past Carlos Sainz as well as the Ferrari finally comes to a stop. There's Russell and Hamilton also coming down the straight. And Carlos Sainz is going to come out in seventh place. But fresh set of tyres, 13 laps done on Hamilton's hards, 14 laps on Russell's. So let's go, Carlos Sainz. He's a second and a half of Lewis Hamilton. Let's see what this Ferrari can do here in Suzuka then. Stroll on softs. Oh, yeah, Stroll on softs. Pitted again. He was running behind Yuki Tsunoda. But has pitted once again as Lance Stroll onto the soft compound tyre. And Yuki Tsunoda finally up into that point scoring place. Back into 10th for Yuki Tsunoda. It was looking like it all gone wrong. Then a wonderful start and an insane pit stop from the RB team. Absolutely smashed Yuki Tsunoda back into the points. And he looks again like the best of the rest driver from those back of the pack teams. Lance Stroll missing out on points for the Aston Martin crew. Fernando Alonso, though, keeping himself just in front of Oscar Piastri at this point. It's Piastri in ninth place, Alonso in eighth. Carlos Sainz now all over the rear wing of Lewis Hamilton in seventh place and sixth place. Is Carlos Sainz going to be able to get past here? Having a little look. Do you wait for the DRS? Here we go, Carlos Sainz. Follows Hamilton through the chicane, round the final corner. DRS is 
going to be wide open, you'd imagine, for the Ferrari at this point. George Russell has also come into the pits in front. So Carlos Sainz is going to overtake both of the Mercedes down the pit straight. George Russell in the pits. Hamilton on track and Carlos Sainz back up into fifth place. Lando Norris now seven seconds up the road in fourth. And then his teammate Charles Leclerc another two seconds up the road in the podium spot right now. The Ferrari in third place. Sergio Perez in second and Max Verstappen leading currently the fastest lap with Sergio Perez. So a bonus point available to the Mexican if that stays as it is. Albon and Ricardo came together on lap one of the Grand Prix, caused a red flag there out of it. And Joe Guan Yu with a brakes issue also came to a stop early. Shrey, thank you so much for subscribing. Massively appreciate it. Carlos Sainz. Podium is on for Carlos Sainz. Most definitely. Six seconds off the back of Lando Norris at this point. We'll keep an eye out for his racing lap time. Oh, especially if Lando Norris is going to make the little mistake there on the exit of the second Degna. Skimmed over the curb, nearly lost the rear end of the McLaren, had to reset and readjust. That's going to be a little bit of time that Carlos Sainz is going to save. Oscar Piastri now ahead of George Russell by 10 seconds after the Mercedes has now pitted. And George Russell onto a medium set of tyres as well. DRS for Oscar Piastri behind Fernando Alonso. Lewis Hamilton on the radio. Tyres are still good. So Lewis Hamilton wanting to maybe extend this stint just a little bit. I mean, it's not going to make too much difference. Yuki Tsunoda miles off the back of... These sort of top nine or the, the top five teams that we've got in Formula One at this moment in time. So Lewis Hamilton looking likely to sort of finish eighth or ninth at the absolute best. So Can a fan just walk on the track? Uh, uh, no, there are like fences and lots of things to keep fans in the place. I mean, if you, if you want to hop a fence, you could do. I mean, Hamilton might as well stay out, right? How far ahead? He's three seconds ahead of Alonso. Maybe. Maybe. Just hold on. Piastri trying to get P7. He's right on the back of Fernando Alonso. But unfortunately, Oscar Piastri's tyres are actually slightly older than Fernando's. So it's going to be a tricky little battle between the two. It's probably going to go right to the end of this Grand Prix, you'd imagine. The battle between Alonso and Piastri is just going to keep playing out. I'll give you $2 if you say Sue. Okay. Hamilton P5? No. <laughs> uh, not for me. Not for me, Jeff. Hamilton in, though. 3.3 seconds stop. Medium tyres onto the, uh, the Mercedes car. Let's see, then. Hamilton is going to come out 10 seconds off the back of his teammate, who is also on a fresh set of mediums. And then they are, again, another sort of 10 seconds or so behind Oscar Piastri. So it's going to be quite a lonely end to the Grand Prix, you'd imagine for George Russell and Lewis Hamilton in 8th and ninth place. Not so lonely for Oscar Piastri, who's going to be right underneath the rear wing of Fernando Alonso for the entirety of it. But we know Fernando Alonso is a wily old fox. He's going to do everything he can to make sure he holds on to this 6th place finish. Carlos Sainz, though, in the distance in 5th place, is closing in on Lando Norris still. Now 3 seconds the gap between the Ferrari and the McLaren, although there is a back market of Pierre Gasly uh, in the way between Lando Norris and Carlos Sainz. So Carlos Sainz won't want to be stuck in the dirty air of the Alpine for too long. I want to get those blue flags a-waving for Carlos Sainz, please. 
But Lando Norris going for it. Carlos Sainz asking, am I on for a race here? Because he can probably see Charles Leclerc in the distance. Knows that his tyres are 10 laps better off. And he's asking, you know, can I go for this podium? I know that it's my teammate. I know that I'm actually leaving Ferrari at the end of the year. But am I still on for a podium finish? And they say, yes, the Ferraris will race one another. So it's looking like we might see Leclerc versus Sainz towards the end of the Grand Prix. But there is still a Lando Norris in the way of that happening. Carlos Sainz now making his way past Pierre Gasly. And the next set of back markers, Esteban Ocon, who's just in front of Sergio Perez. So it's looking like Carlos Sainz is going to catch up to the back of Lando Norris and have that battle fairly soon. Gap now down to 2.4 seconds. Hamilton on the radio. What's the gap ahead? Lost a bit of time on the in-lap. Mercedes just not really clicking today, and it's uh, been a bit of a disaster class from the Mercedes team, honestly. Eighth and ninth place. Neither car has had pace at any real point. Even when Russell looked like he was absolutely flying it was still not enough to make up for the fact that they were so slow throughout some periods that they were just shedding time to the rest of the field there's a yellow flag in sector two and that is logan Sargent. has he come to a stop logan Sargent on the second degna i haven't actually seen what's happened yet there is smoke, there is dust. And I think Logan Sargent has disappeared off the track and he's reversing back onto it. He's gone off onto the dust at the second Degna. But that Williams is still running. Alonso and Piastri make their way past the Williams. And Logan Sargent back out onto the track, covered in dust. It has to be said, but Sargent with a little trip across the gravel and I think is going to come into the pits as well. Let's see a replay of this then. So going through the Degnas. First one. Oh, gets on the curbs. Oh, oh yeah, locks up. Big lock up, huge understeer from Logan Sargent. Ends up just drifting the car off the track through the gravel. And that is a dusty looking Williams. Yeah, almost a double DNF there. Sargent in the wall, not in the wall. No, 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 not in the wall. Just through the dust in the gravel, but has now rejoined the racetrack Has Logan Sargent. So... All good. Well, not all good, but continuing to to go on in the race. Comes into the pits, fresh set of tyres onto Logan Sargent's car. I imagine the team also just giving a little bit of a once-over, double-checking the key areas. And Logan Sargent continues. So, yeah, car, fine by that. Oh! Lando Norris, big lock-up, and Carlos Sainz almost collected the rear wing of the McLaren. But Carlos Sainz right underneath the rear wing now of Lando Norris. DRS is going to be wide open for the Ferrari as well. It's going to be a hefty task for Lando Norris to keep that Ferrari behind with 10 laps to go in the Japanese Grand Prix. Of course, we had the first three laps which didn't really happen, but it's been 50 laps of high intensity action here in Formula One. It's going to come to a four now with Carlos Sainz and Lando Norris coming down the pit straight together. Carlos Sainz, DRS wide open, goes right under the rear wing of the McLaren, moves over to the right hand side of the track and makes the position gained before they even get down to turn one. So Carlos Sainz. Ticked off the list, Lando Norris. Now the two-second gap to his teammate is the next challenge for Carlos Sainz. He's got 10 laps, though. 
and the Ferraris have been given the thumbs up to race. As much as Charles Leclerc has done an exceptional job today, it does feel like Carlos Sainz is just in a, a different league in that Ferrari at the moment. Absolutely come into this 2024 season on fire as Carlos Sainz. And it was that little mistake from Lando Norris, tiny little lockup. And Carlos Sainz just gained more than enough time, put himself in a really solid position underneath the rear wing of the McLaren and got the job done. Carlos Sainz, though, flying that gap now down to 1.3 seconds already. And Carlos Sainz on the radio <laughs> being given the go ahead from the Ferrari team. One more to go for the podium. Esteban Ocon getting out of the way of Charles Leclerc, though, hopefully, so that we can see this battle play out. I don't imagine Charles Leclerc is going to put up too much of a fight. Completely different tyre strategies at this point. Carlos Sainz's tyres, 10 laps cleaner. Uh, basically, Charles Leclerc then given a little bit of the, uh, maybe don't make this too tough for Carlos Sainz. Really, we're not battling with him. We're racing with Lando Norris. Esteban Ocon does get out of the way of both of the Ferraris eventually then. Carlos Sainz didn't lose too much time behind the Alpine there as well. 1.1 seconds still the gap. And Charles Leclerc is likely to shuffle out of the way of his teammate. Teammates collide. That is very true. We've seen that. More than enough times in Formula 1, but usually when they're on similar strategies. Charles Leclerc, 18 laps on this hard set of tyres to Carlos Sainz's 8 laps on this hard set of tyres. And we saw how quickly Carlos Sainz dispatched Lando Norris. It's going to be a similar story. FYM, thank you so much for subscribing. If you are new to the channel, hit that subscribe button for us. We've got 1,200 people in the chat right now. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button as well. The goal for likes, if you want to get the Japanese Grand Prix to the top of the likes standings, is 535. So 535 is the likes goal that, if you can hit, will put this race to the top of the charts so far this 2024 season. Thank you to all of the new subscribers as well. Appreciate that massively. Here we go then. DRS wide open for Carlos Sainz. The battle of the Ferraris commences. It's red on red and Carlos Sainz goes around the outside at turn one. And there was not really much Charles Leclerc could do there. Peeled off to the inside, tried to cover the inside line. Carlos says, says well, if you're going to cover the inside, I'll go around the outside. And does indeed. Carlos Sainz back up into the podium places. Nine and a half seconds off Sergio Perez. Feels like a gap too far, considering Sergio Perez's tyre is only three laps older than Carlos Sainz. But another podium place for Carlos Sainz in this 2024 season just looks very, very good so far, doesn't he? Imagine if he hadn't have missed that Saudi Arabian Grand Prix where he might be in the standings in comparison to the rest. Lance Stroll on the soft compound tyres, making a move around the outside of Valtteri Bottas. Then takes the inside. Oh, lovely little move from the Aston Martin of Lance Stroll there. Not really for much at this point. Well, I say that. I say that. He's eight seconds off the back of Yuki Tsunoda. Does need to get past the Haas of Kevin Magnussen. Valtteri Bottas is struggling at this point, though, because Nico Hulkenberg is about to make his move past, and Bottas has to yield the position Nika Hulkenberg up into 13th place. So Lance Stroll needs to get past Kevin Magnussen. And does. Goes round the outside through the S's. And fastest lap now set from Carlos Sainz as well. Is Carlos Sainz going to try and hunt down Sergio Perez? That'd be absolutely insane if he can. He was nine tenths quicker on that last lap. I mean, if he can do that every single lap. No, he won't quite catch the back of Sergio Perez, but would get close. But Yuki Sonoda is the last point scorer at this moment in time. This is what I'm thinking. So 
Kevin Magnuson has just been dispatched by Lance Stroll. Lance Stroll is on the soft compound tyre. And let's keep an eye on Lance Stroll's pace then. I'll give it another lap or two just to see what we get from Lance Stroll. But if you can close that gap to Yuki Tsunoda, Yuki Tsunoda's not, not flying at this moment in time. 24 laps completed on those hard compound tyres for Yuki Tsunoda. It's a, a long, long stint for the Japanese driver. And those tyres are going to start to fall off a cliff any time now. Quick rundown of the rankings then. Max Verstappen in first place. Sergio Perez over 10 seconds behind his teammate. Then a dominant performance from Max Verstappen once again here in Japan. Then Carlos Sainz put in a real shift. Currently has the fastest lap of the Grand Prix is Carlos Sainz. And in third place would pick himself up a good chunk of points. Thank you, Jamie, for subscribing. Charles Leclerc put in a stunner of a stint. To begin with, on those hard compound tyres after the red flag, put himself in a lovely position to jump the McLarens, and Charles Leclerc has saved his race, moved himself back up into fourth place, and looks like he's going to finish that ahead of Lando Norris in fifth. Fernando Alonso still holding on to sixth place at this moment in time. Oscar Piastri has been right on the rear wing. Oh. Lance Stroll not very happy with the straight line speed of the Aston Martin on the radio. Okay. Uh, <laughs> but Fernando Alonso still just like Oscar Piastri has been within a second of Fernando Alonso for so long now. Like Oscar Piastri has been right underneath the rear wing of Fernando Alonso, but he just can't get past. Fernando Alonso, one of the defensive masterclasses once again from the Aston Martin. Oscar Piastri, with the straight line speed advantage, with the DRS advantage, just cannot get it done. Still has five laps left to go, though, does Oscar Piastri. Might be able to close the gap. Lando Norris is ahead. Uh, what was I saying? George Russell, in eighth place, has closed the gap, is what I was going to point out. George Russell, now within a second as well of Oscar Piastri. So Lando Norris disappearing into the distance but Oscar Piastri finding himself in a real pickle now can't get in front of Fernando Alonso now has George Russell battling behind Lewis Hamilton then in a little bit of a no man's land five seconds off the back of his teammate unlikely to catch the back of this pack then it's a huge gap it's real kind of difference between the top five and the bottom five teams this year Yuki Sonoda is 41 seconds off the back of Lewis Hamilton and is still in the points. <laughs> like, goodness of me. Yuki Tsunoda, 10th place, 41 seconds off the back of 9th. And then Lance Stroll is now 6.7 seconds. Let's have a little look. He was four times quicker, was Lance Stroll. Okay, it's not, it's not out of the realms of possibility that he could catch up to Yuki Tsunoda. It's going to have to be some absolutely stunning laps from Lance Stroll if he is going to be able to catch the back of Yuki. And, ooh, ooh. I think he might have just made a mistake, Lance Stroll, because he just lost a couple of seconds there very, very quickly. Oh, no, I think he was getting lapped by Max Verstappen and ended up losing a little bit of time getting out of the way of the Red Bull. So scrap that. Lance Stroll is never going to catch the back of Yuki Tsunoda with an eight-second gap, in my opinion. And that is going to be that done and dusted. Nika Hulkenberg on a bit of a run. Hulkenberg now coming towards the back of Lance Stroll. Is on the hard compound tyre, though, so will likely stay in 12th. Kevin Magnussen has just let his teammate pass for 13th place. So he's dropped in there. Valtteri Bottas has gone into 14th. Oh! And George Russell, from distance, has gone for a move on Oscar Piastri. And Piastri has to go to the escape road. And keeps hold of that seventh place. George Russell's now going to have DRS, though. He's putting Oscar Piastri under a lot of pressure. Oscar Piastri comes to the right-hand side of the track to cover off George Russell and keeps the position. That was a very, very audacious move from George Russell there. But George Russell went for the move, didn't quite pay off this time around. 
But George Russell is certainly having a little look at Oscar Piastri, and it was Oscar Piastri battling with Fernando Alonso. It might have even been a little bit of contact between the two. Ooh. Yeah, I think Oscar Piastri is within his rights there to, to run through the chicane. I think there might even have been a little bump between Piastri and Russell. Yep, little tiny, tiniest little touch. Uh, George Russell's front wing on Oscar Piastri's uh, front right tyre. Tiniest little touch between the two. Fernando Alonso, though, getting past a back marker. There's an Alpine moving out of the way of Fernando Alonso. I think it's Pierre Gasly and Piastri on the radio. Yeah, Oscar Piastri just on the radio, letting uh, the team know why he cut the chicane. <laughs> just more talking to the stewards there is Oscar Piastri than actually talking to his team. Just saying, you know what, guys? I, I didn't have any space. He gave me no room. I had to cut the corner. Ooh. Piastri, though, DRS because he was getting past the back markers. Three laps left to go, then. George Russell in a battle once again. Let's see. Is Oscar Piastri going to break test George Russell? <laughs> well, we've seen it happen once. See it happen again. Oof. To be fair, George Russell is losing chunks of time. Lewis Hamilton closing into the back of his team. I said Lewis Hamilton unlikely to catch the back of this pack, but now George Russell closing the gap to Piastri. Hamilton closing the gap too. Little bit of a battle going on here for possibly sixth place, even seventh place, because it looks like Fernando Alonso has just been able to escape away. Fernando Alonso actually maybe giving Oscar Piastri DRS because Fernando Alonso knows that they're in the battle with Mercedes for the constructors. <laughs> DRS once again for Oscar Piastri. Just felt like that gap to an Alonso just uh, closed in a touch at the end there. Oscar Piastri within a second now of the Spaniard, but... Alonso, not within touching distance, still looking in his mirror as Oscar Piastri and George Russell behind. Hamilton two seconds off the back of that. Top five pretty much locked in at this point. Well, top six effectively locked in. Fernando Alonso looking like he's done enough to keep Oscar Piastri behind. And now Oscar Piastri more concerned with Russell. But Verstappen going to take the victory here in Japan. Sergio Perez, second place. Carlos Sainz rounding out the podium places. Charles Leclerc in fourth. Lando Norris fifth as we head on to the last lap. And then this is the battle. Alonso in sixth place, just ahead of Piastri in seventh, a second between the two. Then Russell within DRS. Hamilton a couple of seconds behind as well. Isn't completely out of contention, especially if these two cause themselves another mischief through the chicane but they are just coming around the final sector 130 are completed through the chicane they will go once again george russell again quite far back oh and a big lock up from oscar piastri there that's going to open the door to george russell and surely the mercedes driver is going to be able to pounce oscar piastri has to come all the way across to try and cover off, but the position is going to be wide open for George Russell to run into, and there it is, the final lap of the Grand Prix. George Russell takes seventh place. Piastri will be so frustrated with that. A lockup from Piastri just meant that Russell was able to easily make that position up with one lap left to go as well. So frustrating. But here we are, Max Verstappen coming around the final sector. You can see coming through the chicane, Yuki Sonoda has actually been lapped and therefore 
uh, will take the checkered flag just behind Verstappen. But there is Verstappen taking the win at the Japanese Grand Prix. Yuki Tsunoda gets 10th place and gets the points on the board for RB. Wonderful drive from the Japanese driver at his home Grand Prix. Picks up points. Hulkenberg and Stroll also take the checkered flag with Sergio Perez coming in in second place. Carlos Sainz with a stunner of a drive for Ferrari once again. Charles Leclerc just behind his teammate off the podium in fourth. Lando Norris comes home in fifth place. Little bit of a gap now to Fernando Alonso, who's coming through the final chicane. Fernando Alonso is going to take sixth place, though. And there he is across the line. George Russell comes home seventh. Oscar Piastri eighth. And Lewis Hamilton in ninth place. Gasly, the final driver across the line. Oh, no, sorry. Logan Sargent is still yet to come across the checkered flag at the back all by himself after that mistake. Max Verstappen, a very lovely race for the Dutchman, and it was a lovely race indeed. Had a little bit of everything, that one, didn't it? A few battles, a few strategy changes, some dynamic changes within the order. Because the tyre degradation was a little bit heavier than a lot of us were expecting. But I very much enjoyed that Japanese Grand Prix. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. Apologies for this taking a second. There we are. Uh, Max Verstappen takes it. Sergio Perez second. Carlos Sainz third. As I said before, point scorers. Leclerc, Norris, Alonso, Russell, Piastri, Hamilton and Sonoda. Then our finishers, Hulkenberg, Stroll, Magnussen, Bottas, Ocon, Gasly and Logan Sargent at the back of the pack in 17th. Joe Guang Yu dropped out of the Grand Prix due to a brakes and transmission issue. And Daniel Ricciardo and Alex Albon came to blows at the beginning of the Grand Prix. In my opinion, the Australian driver slightly to fault there. Didn't leave Albon anywhere to go. Clipped the front of the uh, Williams car and sent them spinning. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. I am going to disappear because I uh, have to disappear and do some work today. I know what's it like having a real job. Horrible. But there we are. Thank you guys so, so much for all of the new subscribers. Absolutely rocketed up in terms of subscribers today. And for all the likes on the stream as well. If you have enjoyed it, leave a like. I'm going to be back live for uh, my hot takes from the Japanese Grand Prix later on today. Yet to decide on a time for that, unfortunately, because I do have to go to work. So I will keep you updated. But if you want to get involved in that, head over to the community tab, get in your hot take from the Japanese Grand Prix. And I do a stream later on today, just kind of summarizing the stream, uh, summarizing the race and also going through your guys' hot takes. So head over there, give me your hot takes. And if not, hit the like button, hit subscribe. I will see you all in a couple of weeks time for the next live stream stuff because China is a sprint weekend. So four sessions we will be live for. We've obviously got sprint qualifying, the sprint itself qualifying and the race over the course of the weekend. So make sure you subscribe for that. And also lots of videos coming up in the next. As I say, thank you so, so much again. I will see you next time. Good. I'm glad that it's just now frozen right at the end. Just a nice little freeze. At the end of the Grand Prix. Not sure why it's frozen. But it did freeze. Apologies for the freeze. Anyway. Thank you all so so much. Thank you Sally as always as well. See you next race. Thank you Just Mandy. Thank you Nice Man. Thank you Chase Green. Thank you London is Red. Thank you Jax. Thank you Why I'm Here. Thank you Science and the Claire Gurley. Thank you Brandon. Loved it. Thank you all so so much.